Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. It's one of my favorite Bright Diaries today, so let's get stuck in. If you've not watched Bright Diaries before, please go ahead and watch the first episode first because that will explain how I train the dogs, which is really important to know. But today we're doing one of my favorite behaviors, which is a flat down. A flat down just really means that their head is on the floor as well as all of their body. So they look like what I like to call a carpet slug or a floor slug because they're just flat on the floor <laughs> and I really think it's adorable. It works amazing in all sorts of different situations for photographs and it's one of the easiest behaviors to train. Just bear in mind that once you've trained it, it becomes a favorite of most dogs. So you will struggle to get a normal down out of them because they want to be in a flat down all of the time. If you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. The bell icon will help you because it gives you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week we can sometimes more than that if I feel like it. Although in December, we're doing a lot more than that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at how to train a flat down. So basically the normal method that I train this uses an object. So we're not gonna use an object with Bright, but the object method works for <laughs> every other dog that I've worked with. So I'm gonna include the object method at the end, but it was really clear at this stage that all she was gonna do was climb on it. So instead I've reverted to a different method, which essentially is about capturing. So she really doesn't know what I want from her. So she's trying all sorts of different things, including backing up, rolling over, having an absolute party, doing sits, downs, all sorts, because she doesn't know what gets the snacks. So what the aim of this is doing basically is I set criteria and the criteria is that the bottom of her chin is on the floor and that is the criteria that I'm gonna capture with the click. So all I'm doing at this stage realistically is just waiting for the bottom of her chin to hit the floor in a way that she understands that that's what I want. So I don't want biting, I don't want jumping up on me, I don't want her on her side, but I just need the head on the floor. So it's literally a case of just waiting for that behaviour to be offered. And to be honest, it didn't take too long. So she paused there and that was the point of the reward. So yes, yeah, she did have an absolute party, but pretty quickly she did get the idea and it's really important that you do it when their head is on the floor because they'll hold it super close but you have to be really aware of where the floor is. And what you're looking for is just a little bit of contact and a little bit of hold. So when you've kind of got that, they should begin to offer that behavior much quicker. So they might still be having a party, they might still hang off of your arm, bite your hands, just ignore it or reposition until that head is on the floor. You need to have them flat on the floor and as best as you can, ignore biting because as puppies, the teeth are really out. So she's just getting distracted, that's fine. You just re redirect and then wait for the behavior to be offered. And she offered a perfect one there. So we jackpot that with, a, with multiple rewards. So you can tell she's really starting to get a handle of what I want her to do because she's putting her head down much more frequently. She's getting the clicks more frequently. She is really working it out and that is perfect. This is why I love dog training so much because you just have this partnership with the dog and it's great. So you just need to keep repositioning and really high value rewards, really high frequency. And when you've got that to a stage where you both know what's going on, the criteria is being met, the behaviours are being offered like this, then you can really start to remove any handlers, remove any um, directing from you, and you just literally sit in silence and wait for that behaviour to be offered. And you'll find that 
it starts to be offered quicker and quicker and that's a sign that you've got solid understanding. Of course it doesn't always work like that, there are always going to be bits where actually the puppy would rather have a party and that is fine because they're puppies and they're adorable. So at this stage I know she still doesn't have it so I'm not going to start adding a verbal cue because she's not repeatedly offering me the behaviour in quick succession. So I just need to hang on and keep doing some more repetitions before I add the verbal cue and then at that stage the verbal has a meaning. So for me with Bright the verbal is going to be flat, for Alfie and Pippi it's down again after a down which is not useful really. So with her it's going to be flat. Um, I have taught rest um, as well and settle. So pick a word, any word that you want that you think is going to be useful. So for me flat is what we've gone for here. So I've got the verbal in the back of my mind, I already know what I'm going to start to ask her to do, but I need to have 100% understanding before I add that. And at the moment, she, she knows what I want, she put her heads down, she goes, oh, okay. And down to the side is fine, I don't mind that, as long as that chin is in contact with the floor. We have a standoff at, at, at numerous times, and you just have to wait, just be super patient. And eventually they will offer it. So she sniffed then and I didn't reward that. I'm literally just waiting for her to go, oh, okay, fine. I'm going to put my head down to get the snack. And it's an immediate click and reward. So at this stage, this is a different session now. She knows what I want her to do. She's getting it really quickly now. We're getting to a point where we don't have more than five seconds without a reward. And at that stage, you know there is solid understanding there. So you can, at this stage, add the verbal. Like I've just said, for me, that is flat. So a different day, different session, so just checking understanding and the understanding is absolutely fine. I'm just using the verbal and she's offering it very, very quickly. So I can actually say flat from her stood up and she will drop into it now. So that shows a really good understanding of the verbal behaviour. So I'm moving her away and then asking her for it and she nails it which is perfect so you can tell that she really knows what I want her to do now and this means basically we can start differentiating so first of all we'll start to change positions change directions but then it doesn't take too long before we actually change objects so I lift her up and lifting the puppy up is a decision that you guys need to make really carefully. For me, I know I can catch her before she hits the floor if she were to fall. If you're not confident that you can do that, don't do this until they're much, much older. So I'm just asking for the same behaviour on the sofa. So just on the sofa cushion there. So it's nice and comfortable for her. And all I'm wanting her to do is just offer me that head down behaviour nice and carefully. She's already doing this in the presence of another dog because Finn's on the back of the sofa. So I know that that kind of works well for us. So then on the next session, I switch the object. So she's on the chair now, which looks out into the room. Uh, so it's a bit of a different one because she can see a lot more from here. She can see the window behind me, people going past, that kind of thing. So we've increased the level of distractions as well as having her up on the object and I'm still waiting for her to do that head down behavior you can tell that she's quite 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 you can tell that she's quite tired in this particular setup and that's absolutely fine so when you're happy that your dog understands the behavior and is doing it happily on objects then you can add a distraction so we've got a very distracting distraction here who is a Piper? Piper the ginger who is very, very busy. She's a very busy collie. She's very fast. She's quite sharp and she will want the snacks just as much as puppy does. So what I've done is I've got a distraction that's Piper and I'm just asking Bright for the behavior and she's still offering it. My main attention is on Bright, but I also have to keep tabs on where Pip is to make sure that she's not causing a disaster. Uh, Pip is very quick at shaping so what you'll find is if she was doing anything when I clicked for bright I will have that repeated so I'm being hit in the face and the shoulder by Pip 
it with a leg and that is because I clicked at the same time as she did that. So that's normal, you just want to keep the repetitions high, keep watching where puppy is, always keep eyes on the dog that's learning, not the dog that already knows. So all you're wanting the other dog there for is a bit of a distraction and Piper is an incredible distraction to use when you need one. So then it's a case of using that in a photography environment. So we've got a different object, different set. We've got a whole studio going on here. Bright has been in a studio before, so this is nothing new in terms of the setup. But offering behaviours on a chair is quite different. So Dan is there for safety purposes. He is there to make sure she doesn't fall backwards, forwards or off the sides. And I then, when she's happy, begin to ask for the behaviour myself as the photographer. So she's done a perfect flat here. She does do a move, so I just asked for it again. To be honest with you, I should have rewarded after that first one, but you know, hey ho. She managed to pull it out the bag for a second one and we got a beautiful photograph. So I said I would give you guys another method and this is the other method. So these videos that I'm about to show you are of two different dogs. One is Alfie as a one year old I think and the other one is of um, a dog called Pig who um, was in foster with us for a while. So these are from 2015 I think and they show the behaviour from a different uh, technique and the technique in this case uses an object. So I'm using a box and I'm clicking and rewarding for contact of the chin on the box. The height of the box should be comfortable height for the dog to reach over a little bit and just have to make contact with the chin. So this box is kind of the perfect size for Alf. He sat opposite it and every time he made contact with his chin on the box he got a click and a reward. I then pretty quickly start to ask for a little bit of duration and he starts to offer the duration really nicely and then at this point you just change the distractions, change the object, ask for other behaviours because you can also at this point ask for front, so the front feet up and the head down together. So I've got this super quickly because basically he's used to how I train and therefore it's easy. Um, so I'm asking him here for fronts along with the head down. So basically I'm pairing the tricks together, which uh, is something you can do when your dog is 100% confident of what you are asking. So the other dog, like I said, is Pig. So when she was with me, she was called crazy because she was. She's a very, very busy collie and um, she was a rescue. So she had uh, very little sort of basic training as a youngster and all of her training happened when she was older, which means that shaking is a little bit more difficult, but is not impossible. So she already knows front. So trying to get her to keep her front feet off was pretty tricky. But again, I'm trying to lure her with the hand to make contact with her chin on the little box that we've got here. To be honest, I could have done with a slightly taller box for her just so that the lean over would have made contact, but any contact of her chin with the box needs to have a reward. Any other behaviours that are offered, we just redirect, reset, and then put them back on. And when they go ahead and do perfect repetitions, then you can start to add the verbal. So you can tell that Crazy is quite a quick dog. She likes to have things super clear and she's very cute. It's fine to lure to get that head contact. Really, all you want to do is find a method that gets the dog to understand that chin down gets the snacks. And then when you get that, everything else is fine. So I've used raised beds to train this. I've used putting the dog on a sofa and you sitting on the floor because then you can lure them down easier. I've done all of the different methods and to be fair, it doesn't matter which one you use as long as what you want is clear for the dog. So at this stage, we're getting really clear and really consistent responses from the dog who is really enjoying the training process and that means that I'm doing my job correctly. So she really wants to do fronts, so we're doing, well you can't have fronts, we just want the head down. And I don't mind if she's stretching over, it doesn't matter at all because she very quickly understood this and a couple of sessions later we added a camera and we went outside and that was absolutely fine. So it's not a difficult behaviour to teach, you just need that first little bit to make sense and then everything else comes together. 
just take your time, make sure you guys have fun, make sure it's really, really clear for the dog and everything else will be absolutely fine. Then obviously you would add a weight into the mix and that's it. The rest, as they say, is history. So guys, that is the flat down. How amazing is that behavior? I think it's beautiful and I hope that you do too. If you haven't already, please do press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. I'm here to help you out with all of your dog photography needs. So if you've got any suggestions, hit them down in the comments below. And if not, I will see you all again really, really, really soon.